I want you to look at this, uh, this picture of Mickey Mouse and ask yourself, do you recognize it in any sort of way? And it's the one with uh, four Mickeys. Um, if, you, if, you, if you recognize the art, maybe don't know the artist, this is an Andy Warhol piece. Uh, Warhol was, you know, very famous uh, artist, did pop art uh, in the 60s and 70s. And, um, you know, he did a lot of stuff that celebrated pop culture or sort of drab Americana in, in many ways, but a lot of celebration of celebrities where he did, you know, um, layered sort of stencil, um, you know, sort of like um, Banksy type style of, of work, you know, a lot of collage stuff, but he often grabbed images of celebrities. And he did this one of, of Mickey Mouse. Now, knowing that Disney is a very litigious, very protective of its copyrights, um, you know, and again, like Warhol's making hundreds of thousands of, of dollars of, you know, in sales of his original uh, pieces and uh, he made quite a bit of money off of prints of his, of his works. So um, you'd think, you know, the typical Disney thing would be send a cease and desist and fire him on out of there, you know, and try to get, try to maximize his value. But someone at Walt Disney Com Company had a, had a clear head and they said, yo, like, we could sue him. <clears throat> his work is probably not fair use, but he's Andy friggin' Warhol. Like, he's quite famous and he's quite known in like a market that maybe we're not in you know of consumers like he was more like kind of like appealed to like hipsters and um you know like uh, pe you know people you know artsy fartsy new york you know downtown new yorkers what, whatever right um not people necessarily going to disneyland or fans of like disney so someone at disney you know said like maybe we could reach a deal with him so they ended up reaching out to his print house and worked out a deal with warhol um where basically they could share the image so they could both profit off of the work itself so instead of suing him or ordering a cease and desist someone said like let's all make a crap load of money so you can buy this print at walt disneyland or get it on t-shirts there and one of the um nuances to the deal was like warhol couldn't make mickey look bad I don't think he could use it in like advertisements and stuff like that. Like there were some limitations because Disney's going to limit how you use its works. Um, but still, like everybody was able to make make dough off of it. Around the same time, this group of um, animators called the Air Pirates, and we're going to see a film um, in the next couple days here where you meet Dan O'Neill, one of the main Air Pirates, where they made comic books or funnies that um, used all of the Disney characters and you can see some some images of them where they basically um, they put and these were all like you know hippies dope heads you know grass heads of the time you know and they wanted to use Mickey Mouse characters and Disney characters um, in these sort of satires on American society where Mickey was like a gun-toting, uh, guerrilla, you know, warfare revolutionary, selling drugs, you know, having sex and all that stuff. Um, and, you know, like all of the characters would cuss and, you know, whatever. To make a, It was making a commentary, not on Walt Disney Company, not on the characters, but on American on American society using symbols of, again, of Americana to do such. Um, but it was, work was largely satirical. Well, they copied, Air Pirates copied um, Mickey Mouse really well in many, in, in, in uh, Goofy and Donald, etc. They copied too well um, to the point where consumers would probably be confused. Um, just imagine you're, you know, at the, the, the local market with your mom and you're a big Disney fan and you see this Air Pirates comic and it looks like a Disney comic and you get your mom to buy you a Disney comic and you open it up when you get home and, you know, Mickey Mouse is, you know, uh, getting laid and shooting guns and cussing and stuff. Uh, probably, probably need a little bit of that, but, um, you know, 
someone's going to be upset about it, right? And the, so the, the problem was they, they, they borrowed too much. They borrowed too well. And so the Walt Disney Company obviously sued them. Now, they fought this. Now, unfortunately for the Air Pirates, which is sort of a decentralized network of animators, um, they, their lawyers were not intellectual property right lawyers. They were weed, weed lawyers. So um, anyways, they ended up taking it to the, to the, to the um, Supreme Court. And um, basically, if you want to panam them, right, we look at their, their purpose, right? So purpose, what are the air pirates doing? Are they building upon, commenting on uh, Walt Disney characters and the company itself, or are they exploiting it, right? Is it a derivative work? And the answer is it's, it's pretty de derivative, right? They're not actually commenting on Disney. Um, they're commenting on society using Disney characters. Number two, um, which is nature of the original, is Mickey Mouse and Disney characters creative? Yes, they are. So therefore, the use would be, again, like purpose, not fair. We go to amount used, right? Both qualitative and quantitative. Well, they use the whole damn thing. It looks just like the characters. They use too much, right? They use the heart of the works, etc. Not fair. Then we look last at market, right? Market harm would say, again, we go back to the example of the, the kid at the, the market who gets his mom to buy him the comic book, right? Would consumers be confused? Would they think that Disney was the source of this because they borrowed too much, because it was not transformative enough, um, because it wasn't parody, etc.? And the answer would be yes, and therefore it would be not fair under market. It creates market harm. Now you're allowed to create market harm in this way. You borrow from Disney films to let's say do a, um, a review of a Disney film and you use clips from it and you're a major major YouTube celebrity right and millions of people subscribe and they see your review and they don't go and see the movie. That type of market harm is allowable under, under fair use, right? Because you're not replacing the original in the marketplace. You're just discouraging people from seeing it because of your opinion and the value of your opinion. Versus, you know, you stringing together a bunch of clips from, from the movie that, you know, basically repeats the narrative and is an adequate replacement for it, okay? So Air Pirates fell short and they lost in, in the Supreme Court. So uh, let's watch this little clip from um, uh, South Park. I teach a South Park class. I'm actually teaching it right now, and so I, I use a lot of clips from South Park. So that will give us a little, a little break from me talking. But watch this clip. Think about what is it about, um, what are they saying in this clip, and, um, you know, is it a fair use? Why is South Park, uh, you know, a fair use? Specifically an animated show that uses Mickey and has used Mickey a bunch of times. All right, press play on that. <laughs> 